everyone, my name is Alice Markham and today I'll be doing a tutorial on traditional hand-drawn animation. First off, I'll be talking about the use of squash and stretch and how I used it in my simple glowing squirrel animation. So if you want to give the illusion that your character is highly malleable, uh, it is always best to use the technique called squash and stretch. This is where you change the character's shape and form between frames so that it appears to be softer. I'll be using my light squirrel to demonstrate how I use squash and stretch. So here is my project file where you can see my small character jump and land on a detailed sketch that I completed before the animation process. So since my character is white, um, I'm just going to use a purple background. As I skip through the frames, you can see how my character is changing shape. Uh, so I made the animation look more fluid and bouncy by contorting the in-between frames of the key poses. So to make this a little easier to understand, I'll further demonstrate this by uh, using a bouncy ball. So to start, I will open up Animate CC and I'll create an arc indicating the individual spots where I want my object to be placed. I do this because it gives me an outline of my animation's timing. So to explain, the more frames and the closer together, the slower it will appear, while the further away and the fewer the frames, the faster it will be. In this example, you can see I'm adding extra lines at the top of my arc. This means I wish my ball to be slower at the top and as it reaches the ground, I want it to speed up. Once this is done, I then draw out the keyframes. These are the main positions the character slash object will use throughout the animation. So to create a keyframe, uh, which is just one individual frame in Adobe CC, uh, the shot key is F7. Draw each frame of your object on the arc where you've marked it. Stretch out your object as it reaches the ground. Once it hits the surface, squash the volume of the object. When squashing the object, try to keep the same volume. You don't want to change the overall size too much, otherwise it can look distorted. So if you've never used Animate CC before, um, you'll see all these different little tools and tabs that um, I'll be going through in other tutorials. But uh, probably the most important one that you'll need for this lesson anyway um, is a little button called Onion Skinning. So we're just going to click this on really quickly. And essentially what this will do is it'll enable you to see the before and um, an after frame. So I'll just quickly create a new keyframe. This is extremely uh, beneficial when you're doing the in-betweens of animations. Um, so that's what we'll be doing next once we've finished doing our key poses. So we'll just finish off doing our key poses really quickly. So once again, we hit F7 to create a new keyframe. We do another key pose. Sorry, my drawings are absolutely terrible today. Uh, yep, draw a key pose. Yep, that looks like a sad potato, but perfect. All right, cool. So now that we've done a few of our key poses, I'm probably just going to keep this relatively short. So I might just do actually only half of my ball bounce. All right, cool. We have our key poses down. Awesome. So what we do now is once we've done the key poses, we do the in-betweens. So um, we are going to go in between these little frames here. So we might actually just zoom up on our timeline. Perfect. And we're going to create our in-betweens. So that just means selecting the frame, uh, hitting F7 once again to create a new keyframe and simply drawing in our in-betweens. Now the only difference is, is that uh, we're not going to keep this same circle. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to stretch it only just a little bit though. We're just going to stretch it just a little bit. So as it's Going down to the ground, it will stretch a little bit, and once it hits, it flattens. Perfect, that's looking really cool. So we're just gonna continue doing the in-betweens. Yep, and another in-between there. And so we're gonna be doing in-between between this circle and this kind of oval. So we'll make like a, a half overly circle that did not work. Um, there we go, something like that. Cool. And I'm just going to 
create an additional frame because I missed this little guy here. So I'm just going to stretch them out. Um, you can go F7 or you can right click and go insert frame or insert blank keyframe. So I'm going to insert blank keyframe for the time being and I'm going to create another one here. Okay, cool. So I'm doing this really, really quickly. So um, if you're just wondering why it looks quite terrible. All right, perfect. Awesome. And then basically um, I'll speed up the rest of the this little bit. Um, but yeah, you'll just continue doing the in-betweens of um, each of the key poses. Okay, so once we have finished doing all the in-betweens, um, I'm just going to loop it and just drag it along so it only plays um, just where I've animated it to. Perfect. All right, cool. So we're just going to have a little bit of a look at it. Awesome. Just going to get rid of those um, green lines. Uh, also to uh, view anything, it's basically like Photoshop where you can turn off... Um, the visibility of certain layers so I'm just going to be turning off these two elements and let's replay our ball bounce all right cool so you can see how our ball uh, as it flies through the air and um, gets affected by gravity falls down and it smashes to the ground and squashes as it does so and then it lifts up and as it does so, it hovers before bouncing back down to the ground. Cool. So here is a comparison with squash and stretch and without squash and stretch. So you can see the difference between uh, the one with squash and stretch and the one without. So see the one without, you could possibly use that for like a ping pong ball or something. But um, if you wanted to, it to be a, a ball that um, was like flubber, then obviously squash and stretch will help emphasize this a little bit more. Squash and stretch is also used quite heavily in facial animations. Um, when using uh, over-exaggerated facial movements, uh, squash and stretch is always an extremely fun thing to play with. Yeah, if you do want to create a kind of squishy, cute character, squash and stretch is definitely the best um, method for it. But yeah, that's probably about it for today. Uh, for more useful tips on 2D, uh, check out Richard Willing's book, uh, The Animator Survival Guide. Um, this book will work through step by step of all the things that I've gone through today. And um, yeah, that's about it for today. Thank you.